which year you join and from that way your experience and sharing. Right. Yes. Right. I started in the eighties. Um, it was like this that I was searching for a higher purpose of life. And then I found out there are too many ways to practice and it's very confusing. So I read one book, uh, which was called the, the Life of Jesus, something like that. And in this book, it was said that Jesus uh, went after crucifixion, he did not leave his body, but he went to Kashmir, and he, is, he has a graveyard in Kashmir, in, this, in Srinagar, in Rosabal, in the street Rosabal. So I decided to go to India, because in India there are like the world masters of self-realization, and was hoping for a solution, to find a solution there. And my first, <clears throat> I landed in Delhi, 1984, and then immediately I went to Kashmir, and I was I went to this graveyard from Jesus and asked him for guidance. I asked him to bring me to these people who are living today what he was preaching at his time. That to bring me to these people who understand what he was preaching and who are practicing what he was teaching them. So this was my purpose to go to Srinaka and and then I went down after a few weeks from, from because Kashmir is in the very uh, far west end on the border to Pakistan in the mountains. So it takes 12 hours, the bus to come down the mountain. So I came to Amritsa. And in Amritsa, I could not, I wanted to go to, I uh, went to the Golden Temple. And when I came out from the Golden Temple, everything was empty. And it was pretty strange because all the streets were empty. In India, there's no Sunday, no holiday, everything. There's life all, the, all, all around 24-7, but the streets were empty, no people there. And then a policeman came up to me and said, you people, you have to leave the city. And then I found, I saw a newspaper, and it was mentioned there that uh, uh, Indira Gandhi was assassinated. <clears throat> and she was assassinated by her lifeguards who came from Punjab, from the area where in Amritsar. So this was a very strange and difficult situation because it was something like a civil war which broke out in India. And so I went to the railway station and took the next train to, to Delhi. And in this train, the the train was in the morning this was a night train and in the mo very morning like four five o'clock something like this it started to become gray and light uh, this train was stopped in the trench jamuna colony which is which is uh right on the other side of the jamuna from the railway station and the train was stopped there and all the six the sadachis were dragged out and killed Okay. So it, it was a very intense situation, but it was no harm for me because I was from the West and they didn't care about me. But this guy who was sleeping next to me, he, they, they, they killed him. And <clears throat> so 
So then uh, we had to leave the train and went to went just over the bridge to the railway station. And there I came to know one son of a Maharaja who also wanted to go to I wanted to go to Rajasthan and he also wanted to go home. But there was no possibility of traveling anymore. They were there, all the traffic in Delhi, nothing was working anymore. No buses, no people on the street, no taxis. But he said, if he somehow managed to come to the Muslim quarter of Delhi, my brother is there. He, he is a, a doctor in a hospital. So it, it, this is a quiet place. They will not fight there. So uh, we, <clears throat> we were bribing a taxi driver to bring us there because it was extremely dangerous. Because if you run into a mob, then <clears throat> they might kill you because they were setting hotels on fire and fighting on the streets uh, against the Sadajis, against the Sikhs. So hotels and shops from Sikhs were destroyed. So there we spent a few days after the riots have calmed down. We, we went to Kashmir, uh, we went to Rajasthan with the train. And in Rajasthan, I, I went to Pushka. Pushka is a famous uh, pilgrimage place where there's the only Brahma temple there, and there's also a Gayatri temple there. So I spent some days there, and, and there also I, I kind of came into a very difficult situation because I got hepatitis. <clears throat> and I was lying, I was traveling alone by myself. So I was lying a few days in my room. I could not do anything. I was extremely weak. Every bone in my, in my body was aching. And somehow or other I got better. And when I came, got, got out and, and could go on the street again, I met five Italians, and these these Italians, they, they they were also vegetarians, and we started to cook together. They were very nice, and especially one of them, I felt kind of a most related to him. Even I just knew them a few days, and. We decided to, that we travel together because we wanted to go to Baranasi and then to Chaganath Puri. Um, I wanted to go actually to Chaganath Puri because in this book was described that Jesus uh, was educated in Chaganath Puri and then he went back and started to preach. So I, I saw Chaganath Puri, this might be an interesting place. But this Italian boy, he said, but before we go to Varanasi and, and uh, Jagannath Puri, let's go to Vrindavan. And I said, what is this Vrindavan? I never heard his name. He said, this is the place where Krishna was living. And I said, that's exactly the place <clears throat> where I want to go. I want to see this, this uh, spiritual places. So let's go there together. And the other four, they, they already went to Varanasi and we said, we too, we go to Vrindavan and we will meet again in Varanasi. Varanasi is the famous place on the uh, Gang Ganga. So we came to Vrindavan and we got out of the bus and I could not move anymore. I could hardly carry my bag because the hepatitis came back and I was extremely weak, could hardly walk anymore. And one of the shopkeepers, we asked him for a, for a room because at this time, 84, it was quite a different time. 
So we one had to ask around, is there any any usually it was like this that in these times when the bus was coming, then at least 10 or 20 young small boys came and they wanted to drag you to their home to take the room, to rent a room in their home. But when we came out of the bus, there were no boys there. And then we asked the uh, shopkeeper and he said, you, you people, you have to go to Krishna Pararamandir. So this was the ISKCON guest house. And my friend said, yeah, okay, let's go there. I didn't know the place, but he knew it. So we went there and I explained to the guest house manager that I have hepatitis. And he, he gave me a paper with the address of uh, Babaji, who was specialized in healing hepatitis. And I could not talk one word to this person. He didn't speak any language which I understood, and he did not understand my language. So we were just signing to each other what to do. So I went to him every morning and evening. And after like five, six days, I felt I have come over the hill, I'm getting better. I feel that things are over, I'm still extremely weak. So <clears throat> during this time, when I came back from the healing in the morning, I was sitting in the Krishna Balara Mandir and one devotee came from Holland. He, he was a friend of Prachanath Prabhu and his name was Vaikuntanath. And this Vaikuntanath, it was pretty strange. He was married to one Austrian lady from Innsbruck. Her name is uh, Harimati. Harimati. She is still living in Amsterdam. So, so Vaikuntanath, he, uh, he just came there because he was not in ISKCON anymore. He was a so-called fringy. So he was not there anymore in ISKCON. And he, in this year, 84, as far as I remember, or maybe even 86, whatever, he was initiated by um, Srila Shrida Maharaj. But he came there to, he, because he just wanted to sell his video camera because he needed money. So then we, we started to talk. And at that time, I had no idea about whole Vedic philosophy. I was initiated from a Tibetan uh, Buddhist monk. But I, because all my friends, they were Tibetan Buddhist, Buddhists, and I had not so much relation to this whole uh, process. And, but I was interesting, very interesting to hear from Vaikuntanath what he had to say. So we started to talk and we were talking two, two three hours. And, and then he said, okay, because you, you seem to be very interested, I come the next day and then we can continue. And then when he came the next day, he said, you know, why don't you come to us? Because you are so weak. You cannot, we cannot walk. I cannot show you the temples. So it's easier if you come to our place stay in our home and I, so then I went with my Italian friend to him and we could talk the whole day about Krishna consciousness and like this uh, I came to know this philosophy and I was from the very beginning very attracted and I asked him to bring me Bhagavad Gita. I said, I want, I, I want to read this book, please bring it to me. And because I was very weak, I couldn't stay in Vrindavan because it was so cold. So I, I, I was going to leave. 
to Varanasi and Chaganath Puri. But before that, I went to this Babaji who was healing me, and he and I wanted to give him a donation and thank him for his wonderful service. So I came to him and even we didn't speak any word to each other. Um, we embraced each other and to say goodbye. And I started to cry like a little boy saying goodbye to his most dear father. I was so emotionally deeply attracted by him and I couldn't understand what was going on because I had no so-called conversation with this person and still there was such an intense emotional attraction there. So it was, this was for me like uh, feeling the essence of, of uh, the Bhagavad Gita which I got, I got already this feeling of <clears throat> what what I can expect, so to speak, when I'm going this way. It was like the so-called carrot in front of the nose. And like this, I got this intense feeling from this Babaji. I got the teachings from my Kuntanat Prabhu. And I got Bhagavad Gita, and we also went to small, different temples in the end. In the last days, I was there, and we went to Loi Pasar to buy a Chapamara and a bead bag. And with this whole package, I left <clears throat> Vrindavan. And then we were a few days in, in Chaganath Puri, and one of these boys, of these five boys, he <coughs> went swimming in the ocean and he never came back. Um, just his dead body came back two or three days later. And <clears throat> this was um, also the time when we said goodbye to each other because I left for South India. I went all the way down to Kerala and started to read Bhagavad Gita for four hours in the morning and four hours in the evening, every day, cover to cover. So I studied this book very carefully. And this, at this uh, verse, uh, Pushpa Patram Phalam Toyam, in Bhagavad Gita, I, I remember very well, I started to make offerings and then I started to chant on the Chapa Mala. I had no idea, how, I just knew that how it worked, but how many rounds and this and that, I had no idea. So I read this book and then in the end it was said that one can study Vedic philosophy in Mayapur in Bengal. So I thought I have about one month left for my visa time. So it was February. And I thought, okay, I go till the end of March, I go I go to to Mayapur and see how this situation is there. Maybe I can study Vedic philosophy. So I took the train, went through whole India came to Calcutta Hara station and then took this small train to Krishna Naga and from Krishna Naga I took uh, such a three wheeler to Mayapur and there was something pretty strange because I saw this is alone some place somewhere in the countryside and the closer we came the more people were on the street and there were so many people. And and then uh, when he dropped me at Krishna Balarama, uh, not Krishna Bala, at, at this Mayapur uh, Chandradaya Mandir in, in, from ISKCON, um, there were hundreds of people walking in and out and what's going on. And then I realized 
Uh, this is uh, Gopurnima. This is uh, Lord Chaitanya's birthday. And it was the four, 499th birthday of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. At this day, I came to Mayapur. <coughs> and exactly one year later, at the 500th anniversary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I became initiated there from Harikesh Maharaj um, in Mayapur. And this was, uh, and then I was about 10 years on book distribution, mostly in Austria, sometimes in Germany. <clears throat> and this was the time when I also came to know Sayarishi, <laughs> who is today Suniti. And when I came, so I came to know at this time also <clears throat> Saduma and so many other devotees. And in the end, um, I was, <clears throat> at this time, I was living in Tirol before I moved to Sweden. And, <clears throat> and then, uh, it was like this that uh, Arikesh Maharaj, he, he left ISKCON in 98 and there was a lot of problems. So this was a good time to for a change and <clears throat> we went to Sweden and then many years I didn't practice anything. And I thought to myself, <clears throat> I will not, I will not practice anything by uh, rules and regulation anymore. This is, I have no taste for that. <clears throat> and I want, if I want to practice anything, then I want to make it from something, so to speak, from the heart. But because I was living in Sweden, I had I didn't meet any devotees there. There were hardly any devotees, just a very few <clears throat> in this area where I was staying. And there, I never met <clears throat> Nana Ryan Maharaj, and I never met Sadhu Maharaj in these years. So I had very little idea what was going on, but somehow I had this desire that to to start, but in a very different way. <clears throat> and like this, it happened that uh, I make it short now that I. <clears throat> I wanted actually to, I, I came to Suniti's place, to her home, and, and she was in India, she said, oh, but, but there is my husband, Kaur Sundara, and you can, uh, you can just go there, he will be happy that you come. And so I went there. And that there was Gora Sundra, and there was also Mo Mohini was there as a, because she was friend with Suniti, and she was there for a few days, and I also happened to be there, but we ha we hardly spoke to each other, and <clears throat> and like this, uh, I came to know Mohini, and I came to know. Uh, Gora Sondara and all the different devotees who were actually connected to Sadhu Maharaj. And I started to visit Gora, um, Krishna, Krishna Chandra in the south of Switzerland in his ashram. 
and went to this uh, Bhakti Yoga Festival in Schweibenalp. And like this, I came to know all these different devotees. And <clears throat> I started uh, to uh, become more interested. And so <clears throat> my relation with Mohini also started at that time. And she uh, then started to introduce me to this wonderful way of Rupa Nuga, so to speak, and to the <clears throat> different devotees who are connected to Gurudev Sadhu Maharaj. And like this, uh, my desire to somehow start again was manifested in such a beautiful way and even I have never met Gurdiv in all these years, I met so many devotees who were disciples of him. So for me, when <clears throat> I came the first time then to Mungia Mandir and met Gurdiv, it was kind of very interesting meeting because somehow we, we both knew from each other and we were like coming together like old friends. This was very beautiful and for me so many old friends like Gauranga, uh, Gauranga Sundara from Croatia and even uh, Jayananda uh, I've met before in Mayapur at Sankadan meetings with Hari Namananda and Navina Nirada. So it was kind of interesting for me, all these people whom I knew from the, all these years, they are there in this kunj, so to speak. So <laughs> it was very nice for me. So there was no question if I should like take initiation from Gurdjieff for things like this. For me, it was obvious. I mean, where shall I go otherwise? I mean, this is, for me, this is, my, my new reality which was given to me and I was I'm, I'm extremely thankful to to Gurudev and to all of you that day, yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially Mohini and Suniti uh, that they brought me into this wonderful association and I can see I'm far away still okay. far away from um being on so-called Rupa Nuga level, but I'm a sympathizer and oh. I have very great ap appreciation for this wonderful association. I, I think I'm in, in totally the right society, in the right Sangha, in the right um, um, uh, yeah, what is it called? Uh, Achati Sangha. Sachati Sangha. <clears throat> so, obviously, Gurdjieff says, oh, you have very good, you have very good fortune, you have very good Sukritis. And I, I, I have to say, yes, I think also I have extremely good Sukritis that I have come to your association. And I'm very thankful for that. Jai Gurudev, thank you. Please accept my obeisances. Jai. Jai. Wow, Shakshu, thank you for sharing your your life, your spiritual path. And then I remember also how it all happened again. <laughs> Old memories come back. And I'm thinking that uh, 
we are now somehow, like Urdish said, we are the seniors, right? We have these experiences of 30, 40 years and, uh, and still it's never like, you know, the nectar never stops dripping if, if the hearts are open. So I, I feel that Gurdiv has given us so much more deeper understandings. And we are lucky that we can be here in our old age. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> in our old age, we become young again, Gurdiv. This is your mercy. <clears throat> that you make us young, Gurdiv. <laughs> yes, I also, I also can see it, which is very sad, I have to say, that <clears throat> quite many devotees who are, uh, who become now 60, 70, 80, yes. that they are alone, they, they, have, they have no Sangha, okay. they're some, somewhere alone, and they also, they don't have any spiritual path. But they, they never they never developed a taste <clears throat> or maybe they not developed it they never found found this this taste and attraction and it's very sad to see uh, <clears throat> that they have come to a certain degree but then it stopped and this is what Gurudev always says to us, you, you are now practicing 20, 30, 40 years, but where have you come? And unfortunately, it's very true. And sad to see these devotees. You're right, Chakshu, yes. Happy birthday again. Thank you. It's so Thank nice you. to listen to you. Nice words, and I can also remember when you come first time here, but it is not only that we met, you know, Vishwadev, you, you come uh, as an old friend, you, you was very known here. This was not a, a newcomer, Chakshu. Oh, Chakshu, yes, I know very good, Vishwadev, <laughs> since many, many, many years before he know, we know. Before I know uh, uh, Vishwadev, yes. And I can also see what you say that many devotees, senior devotees, they are without uh, a home, a spiritual home. And I understand now because of the teaching of Gurudev, why is it happen like this? Because there is no Stai Bhav. Again, without Stai Bhav, you are homeless. And these people are like homeless people. You need this Thai bath to, to find your spiritual home. No Thai bath, no home. Before, before yeah. Thai bath, you need to, to, you need to meet these devotees who have an idea where to go and what to do. Yeah. This is the first thing. So therefore, I'm so happy that I came to you that I could understand there's something like Thai bath exists. At that time, I didn't know about Staibav, Chakshu <laughs> even. <laughs> it took some years that the teaching of Gurudev came. When he started with one-pointed, we have to be one-pointed. So our altar, you can, if you see at this time our altar, there were so many uh, different <laughs> deities there. Not only uh, uh, our Radhika, she was not prominent at the beginning, but mm -hmm. after the years, uh, she became more and more prominent. And now, she is the the the, the, the absolute prominent deity, and uh, we are really her disciples. We are her mm -hmm. mancharis. It took ten years to understand this. To find this this home, and this is the, the the biggest gift we can get in our spiritual life that we find our goal, our real goal, and the uh, ishtadev, the real ishtadev, no? Mm -hmm. 
That's our good fortune. Yes, it takes time to sink in because at first it's theory and we have to accept the theory, but then by good fortune and if we are enough um, devoted and humble, it can sink in. When the heart is prepared. Yes. Except also the navigator, Chakshu, right? Yes. <clears throat> Oh, look, there's all these senior devotees. Uh, of course. First and foremost, what a, what a wonderful storyteller you are. I, I don't know what kind of work you do in your daily life, but I hope it involves telling stories. <laughs> That was just uh, beautiful, just uh, composed and constructed and uh, with the right rhythm and the right uh, beginning and end and middle. That was just uh, wonderful. So thank you. And as, um, maybe as a consequence of your wonderful storytelling, we've never met, of course, but of course now we have met. And... Uh, so I feel like I've met you now, and I'm grateful for that, but I feel like I've not met a world from your story, a world of places and people. I feel like I know the, the children who meet the bus, and I've, met, I've been to the temples and the youth hostels and the different places. I felt your pain from hepatitis. I've met the Babaji, who's the expert in hepatitis mending. It feels like the whole world sort of blossomed up inside my, my heart just listening to this uh, story. So I'm grateful and I'm, I'm lucky to have met you today, but uh, I met a world. The world that you passed through to, to get to this place. And I think that's part of what uh, our experience is as, as brothers and sisters. About <laughs> Sorry, I have to say, I understand maximum 50% of what you say. It was only 50% worthwhile anyway. <laughs> so it is because the sound is so broken, it's very difficult to understand. But thank you for your appreciation. And maybe on we can talk um, more clearly to each other. <laughs> you should have stopped me, brother. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Can I say a little bit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, unfortunately, due to my, my bad connection, I could not hear first part of you know, your story. I'm very unfortunate, but uh, when I heard your story, then, then I was thinking, oh, Radha Rani is so kind. Radha Rani want to pick someone, <laughs> pick someone. Then Radha Rani guide to meet someone who is, who has a style barber, someone who has, you know, uh, someone who has ability to guide us. A few days ago, Gurudev was saying to us, actually, we should not miss this opportunity. Because Gurudev cannot say his glory. <laughs> but it is very dare, dare to find someone who has style Baba, someone who has you know, very kind of heart. Because many Babaji is there, but they can speak only Hindi or Bengali. Also, some Babaji does not want to accept the foreigner, like us. So we, 
we have a very small choice. We have to find out someone who speak English speaking sadhu, who is, who has Sai Baba, who has much realization, who is very kind to accept us, especially for, you know. So after hearing your story, oh, every devotee, especially here. So Radharani kindly guide us to attain supreme goal. Radha's seva of Charana seva. And also, when I, I met Zoom in Chakshu, honestly, my feeling is, is so, I, I was so happy. At first, I could not understand, oh, this Chakshu is my old friend Chakshu. I could not understand at first. But later on, your, your face, I remember, oh, this is a real Chakshu. I think probably we met Chakshu. I, Chakshu, I met Chakshu Pabu probably 1994 is sure, or five, four or five. And I, I think before also I met, maybe 1990 or 91 or two, because at that time we also so much into for book distribution. And at that time, Harinamananda Pabu and Namina Nirada Pabu, they are like, a, they are distributed many books. And Chuck Shibabu, I don't know so much, but he also distributed many, many books. We are, compared to them, we are very small. But uh, we are, in Japan also, we have a Gita Govinda, and uh, we are also, you know, we also distributed many books. So, I remember, oh, that Chakshi also joined Sadhu Maharaj. Oh my God, this is so much pleasure given to me. You know, because he's like my old friend, very dear friend. Even though we don't, we don't know each other so much, but from beginning, I have some attachment with Chakshi. Wow. He may not remember me, but I remember him. <laughs> I never forget Chakshi. <laughs> So nice. because, because at that time, I may talk a little like Harinam Nandapa is my junior at age. And Harinam Nandapa also, he's a little shy. So Chakshi at that time, he's a little talkative, you know. And the age, I don't know how, how old are you, but uh, quite a similar age, I guess. 64. So, like, huh? 64. Sorry, Zem, you, I mean, you are much uh, senior than, uh, than me. So anyway, so I feel, you know, very similarity. So even though I'm junior, but, uh, you know, I feel so much affection to Chakshu. So when I, I met this, this Zoom Sangha, and then I sent a small message to Chakshu Pabu and Mohini. And then and he also remember. Oh, you know, then, you know, I feel so much pleasure. Oh, I met all the friends who have same, you know, hey, same goal. Sajati Sangha, oh, I wish to talk with you personally, you know. I have so much strong desire to talk with you, you know. So this time, if I could meet with you, you know, I would like to, you know, share and talk and, you know. Yes. This is very wonderful, you know. They, I am so happy, you know, because I like Suniti and and Gorasundra is you know we quite meet quite often, but uh, in Munger Raj Mandir I never meet met you, I guess. So because maybe some you know sometimes difference, sometimes I can you know different time so. After hearing, you know, this, my pleasure is so much increasing, you know. Your love also so much increasing. <laughs> this is the honest feeling. You know? Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing. It's uh, one thing I wanted also to mention. After Hari Kesh left ISKCON, and um, for me, it was very important. I said to myself, I don't want to have a guru anymore. 
from the West, especially from America. I have, honestly speaking, difficult uh, have difficulties hearing lectures spoken in, in American English. It's it, it took a little time for me to that I can listen to Mahanidhi Swami. Even of course, so this has it has left an impression in me which is not very favorable. Let's say like this. And I said to myself, I want to have a guru or like not even guru. I want to have like a person who is more kind of my friend and who is totally realized in what in what he is teaching no theory anymore and this was for me a very important decision i didn't want to have these theoretical teachings anymore i had so enough of it so this was a very important what you said also now. Thank you. I also I you know somewhat as a same situation from 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 I join ISKCON, Rameshwara Maharaj. I was supposed to initiate from Rameshwara Maharaj. And I asked him for initiation, but he he said. I don't take any disciple anymore. And I shocked, you know. And this is my fault. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I was looking for Guru, Guru Dev. But uh, I went to my Guru, 87, first time. But at that time, I saw many Guru, but I could not find out. I could also, I may not have seen to, I to see real, who is real sadhu. So then I go to, you know, American Guru Dev. Then after a few years, I realized, oh, Raganuga Bhakti is highest, but uh, as an American Guru, as a foreigner Guru, I felt they, are, they cannot teach us for, for Raganuga Bhakti. And then we are looking for, you know, Guru Dev. Then, for me, I found out Gora Gomina Sai Maharaj. But uh, unfortunately, at that time, you know, many Eastern leaders, some envious of him, and then he left his body in 1996. Then 1998, also Harikeshaman left. I was so shocked also. And then also, you know, after Gora Gomina Sai Maharaj left his body, I also lost to, 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 to visit, you know, <laughs> Bhubanesh Chora and uh, Brindavan a few years, you know. But anyway, I went to once, 87, I went. And uh, I heard, you know, many stories from Gora Gomina Sai Maharaj. And again, so shocked. I feel so, you know, sadness. And then for me, you know, I met Nare Maharaj, but I felt for, I'm Asian, you know, yeah. so, and I like Indian Guru, honestly speaking. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Nare Maharaj and, you know, many Indian Guru, and uh, finally, I also, I was guided to Sadhu Maharaj. And Sadhu Maharaj is, you know, so kind. I never seen like this kind of guru. Because uh, when our ISKCON time or even Godama time, guru is like a very kind of difficult to approach sometimes, difficult to talk. Or many, many disciples. <laughs> like Nara Maharaj has 10,000 disciples. And it is difficult to approach and talk intimately. Unless he is in Japan. When he is Japan, we, we could talk more. But uh, if India, if I stay in India, other country, it's so difficult. Because many people want to meet, want to talk. But Sadhu Maharaj, if we want, we can talk hours. If, you know, that is really amazing and so friendly. I never, I never see like him, you know. So, 
I also, you know, I feel like、uh, we, we go through, you know, same kind of experience. Therefore, like s u n i t i also. So, therefore, you know, like,、uh, like we are like considered like an old, <laughs> old friend.、Yeah? And we can share. And also, I was thinking many years I'm junior. Even now I'm thinking junior. But still, some of the many devotees, you know, die, many de- devotees left. And、uh, compared to like a relativity, like、uh, we become a little bit, <laughs> it seems similar. <laughs> I was a little shocked. I'm very shy to speak, you know, as a devotee. And, but I'm very happy to hear from, you know, Chakshu, Pabu, and Suniti, and other, you know, senior devotees. I love it. And Goranga, Sundara. So sorry. This is, today's, I'm so happy to hear. Thank you, Jainanda Maharaj. So beautiful. I also, honestly, by mercy of Gurudev and all of your good association, I forget the age, really. I also feel always very young. If I'm not a little bit down, then I got, get、uh, in the old consciousness. <laughs> <clears throat> But this、um, practice of, of Dasi. Behalf, it really makes us、uh, eternal conscious come into the eternal consciousness. And by speaking and listening to you, also Shakshu, today it's a birthday, but actually、uh, our birthday has different dimensions. And I was,、uh, when I listened to your story, it was a little bit, it seemed to be so cruel that in your first visit to, to the holy places, You see, so many people、uh, leave the body. It seemed like you have many tragedies, you have many, you know, strange、uh, experiences. But at the same time, like Jainanda Maharaj said, it is the mercy of Srimati Radhika who coming to get you to Vrindavan to this mood of this, you know, eternal love. And to always feel inspired to be in contact with somebody who is vibrating in this is our good fortune. Even though, like, yeah, yeah, we have gone through all, you know, difficult situations. We had this guru and that guru. With the, we were in this institution and we try to always find the way of the highest attraction, right? Which is Srimad Radhika's love. But it took some years to, it took some time. And now finally, we can be together and we can cry together. We can laugh together. We can dance together. And we can, we can be also in a way, we can be happy that we are where we are, right? <laughs> At least often I feel like this. Because, like Shakshu said, many、uh, older devotees, They are not alone and they are feeling、uh, maybe disappointed. <clears throat> so I'm very、uh, thankful that Gurudev is helping so much because he has this, how can I say, you know, to express, he has this, this love and this affection. And he looks beyond the body and beyond every external covering. And he has a, the real love that we can feel and then we can progress in our steps that we have to take. So it was also very valuable to hear this today, your story again, Shakshu. And I hope you come soon again back to Germany to us. <laughs> we miss you. <laughs> Yes, I hope. I think we will come when Janan will come.
will be very happy to see you. Without you, it's it's also nice, but not beautiful. To do. <laughs> Jainana comes so far to meet you. Yes. <laughs> So nice what, I feel, <clears throat> what I feel when I listen to all of your beautiful stories of your successful lifetime, that all of your senior devotees was eager to find the answer for this life. And you were searching whole lifetime. I can see this in when I listened to your story, then it was a, a big, was heißt das, Suche. A big search. And uh, at the end of our life, we become senior and somehow. And uh, But I can see this very successful. You find the goal. And this is, uh, this is more we can not find in any life. No? This is so positive to listen to this old... This, the stories of, of one's lifetime of a, of a devotee. This makes so much hope for everybody who listened this. And there is no step uh, without success. Even when we think back, there is some obstacles was there. Some gurus was this or that, but it is even these steps was important for everybody. No? So... And at the end, we can see it is everything is good we did, or you did. And more, as, as long as you open your heart for new experiences, as this, then you're growing. And this big flower of uh, Bhakti Lata. This, I think it's a name, no? Suniti. This yes. then became the flower. At when we are getting senior, you see Gurudev. Now, when when he is in old age, he is the most beautiful flower now, Big. full of fruits, and even same time full of flowers. <laughs> most fragrant, <laughs> fragrance, <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> and just dripping. Yes. The nectar is dripping. Um, and also full of manjaris. <laughs> yes, full of manjaris. Full of little buds. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mohini, Mohini was uh, asking. Um, wie heißt das schnell? Um, The body, uh, Pre 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 He was asking Prem Prayochan one time, uh, what is the, the difference? Because when I listen to you and when I listen to Sadhu Maharaj, there, it seems to be kind of different. And then he answered, you know, this, it's simple. I'm I'm a young tree developing and Sadhu Maharaj is like an old mango tree who has very beautiful, ripe, sweet fruits. <laughs> who are so ripe, falling down from the, from the tree and opening and the juice is coming out. So this is a, this is the difference between the two of us. <clears throat> And what I actually have uh, realized in all these years, because in in the uh, hidden past of devotion, Narayan Maharaj stresses the point of loba and of this um, what's in English loba. Um, Greed. 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 So this this greed actually has to be there for everything. It's not just that we need uh, 
the greed when we come to Rupa Nuga. There, it, we have to have this desire, which the, the desire is actually uh, like a seed form of greed. So this desire is actually the main, the main for me, the main force, the main ingredient to that things can happen in our life at all. Because this is, because the way, like, in the end, the way is love. And love means free decision. So if we do not, like, in, I can, in, very interesting in my life, I had no idea what I want in a concrete sense. I just knew about where I want to go. But I didn't know, there were so many possibilities. I couldn't uh, express, this in, express it in a concrete way. It was just very vague. Mm -hmm. But I had this desire. And I knew there are personalities who understand my desire. And I was asking them to guide me. So this is the most important ingredient in the human life is this desire for change and this desire for coming further. And this is like the, the engine in our life that something can happen. <coughs> it's based on love and love is a free decision. And if this free decision is not used in a certain, in the way uh, that you uh, open yourself, like you said, you open your heart, then these personalities, they cannot guide us. If we open, if we open, we have this desire, then they have the possibility to guide us. And this is up to us. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. So for, for me, this is the most important aspect. It doesn't matter you may be only three years old or 10 years old or whatever. It's always this desire which gives the direction. Because I remember very well when I was a child, it was really strange that my thoughts and that what I heard in my surrounding from the different people didn't fit. It just didn't fit. I, I was thinking about something else. And I, I couldn't even tell about what was going on in my mind. And I thought, okay, maybe I'm a little strange or something. So I, I kept it for myself. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but it was, this desire was already there for in my childhood that I wanted to come in, in this world, which I somehow uh, imagined uh, that it that it exists, mm. but I could not. I did, it didn't have any hint Indeed. if it exists and where it exists. Mm -hmm. But because of the desire, I came into your association. Yeah. Rade, rade. Very beautiful sharing. Thank you for opening your hearts and feelings. And I want to, if there's nobody else who wants to share on these points, I want to ask uh, and invite uh, our Shiva Prada to read one of his poems of Srimati Radhika. Are Are you there? Suniti? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> there is just something little I want to say to, to all of you because uh, yes. I think this is something very important for like people like me, little rascals on, on the stage. But uh, I'm so thankful for all your seniors because uh, to see on 
on the way you are and what are you doing and how also you get it step and step more further to the to the one point the goal is so helpful in is so really helpful in and i think that uh, i don't speak only for myself to say that this is what we also need of course we have the guardians from from guru dev and and so thank you for this but also to see that what is uh, teached every day is working in other people's life mm -hmm. this this is one of the most important thing for me to see and this give me also hope when i struggling around that i can remember to to all of you and say okay there are plenty of other peoples and and this is working i uh, also had the chance to to join iscon in 93 or something and this was always missing by senior devotee that you really can see <clears throat> how how developed they are in 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 the in, in the spiritual way in their own spiritual way and find their own identification and and this is so much different here and uh, yeah very thankful for this rade rade Thank you, Ramananda. So nice. So can I start? Is there somebody else who want to say something or can I start? Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank one more to Chakshu, brother. Even if we... Uh, don't know each other, but uh, I uh, can understand and recognize uh, myself in uh, some aspect of your story because it seems that we coming from the same background, actually, that we pass from the similar cha challenges uh, because if I also was a uh, disciple of Harikesh and uh, these challenges also was uh, appear in my, in my life. So I can understand you and I'm very happy to that I have opportunity to meet you in this environment of uh, Radhika's devotees and also uh, thank you to Jananda uh, because you mentioned uh, Gaur Govinda Maharaj uh, I had the uh, mercy to uh, met him two times in my life and I was very impressed to see such uh, elevated devotee like he is because I met many gurus and devotees who spoke about uh, Radha and Krishna, but uh, uh, as I can remember that uh, Gaur Govinda Maharaj impressed me because uh, he is actually uh, shining for Radha and Krishna actually during the, his speech. It's, uh, was, I was astonished, I remember, by his way, how he expressed his feelings. It's not just preaching, it was shining, it was really he he leave what he spoke directly from the heart. So thank you very much. So this uh, new poem, just to find it, so this is the uh, last poem I, uh, what I wrote for Radhika and read it for her. And then after that, I send it to Sadhu Maharaj and uh, thank you for, you gave me opportunity to read it for you. So just a second to find it. So let us glorify to our Rishabhanu Nandini. O oh, Radhe, why does the lotus flower open its buds? To point out the beauty of your eyes when you wake up at dawn on a bed of flowers. O oh, Rasamai, why does the rainbow curl across the blue of the sky? To show the shape of your eyebrows 
when you hear the voice of the one who is the life of your life. Uh oh. Oh, Gaurangi. Why does the moon pass through the clouds? To touch the radiance of your face while rushing to the Abyssar with your loved one. Oh, Hema Gauri, why does the cherry blossom turn the red when it meets the rising sun? To reflect the color of your lips, oh, most beautiful. Oh, Rishabhanu Nandini, why does Yamuna splash the shores of Vrindavan? Because she calls you to embrace you with the waves, oh, most beloved. Oh, Subangi, do the birds sing in the groves of Raj? Or is your sweet voice heard as you call Mohan into your arms? Oh, Praneshwari, did that sky descend on the parts of Rindavan? Or the earth is blue with the radiance of your gaze while looking for Govinda's footprints? In your eyes, the universe rests. Because wherever you look, you see him who permeates it with his own beauty. In his eyes, the sun is at rest, for the color of that sun is the color of your sari that turns red as you approach Mohan, not touching the ground. There are kisses on your palms, which you send him with a warm wind to the lips that, that whisper your name even in dreams. Oh, Radike. Oh, Radike, why do we write your name on our cheeks with tears? Why do hearts become as soft as cotton the more your name is called? Why are you, why are you our life and soul, our treasure, our homeland? That is because you feed us with love and we want to serve you with love. Cast your merciful gaze on us, on your faithful maidservants. There is no other way for us, no other life. We are yours and you are ours. And that's all we know. Rade, this is our breath. Rade, this is our exhalation. Rade, it is our whole life. Thank you for your kind attention. Oh, again, 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 again. Very touching. Very touching. Your brother, Radhe Radhe, please. Radhe Radhe, thank you very much. Can you read just a little bit slower? Because everyone here and everyone in Zoom wants to really relish your poem and go deeper. Please, just a little bit slower. Okay, I will try. Also, if you could share in 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 the letter it's also very nice we could more taste we can remember yes sure okay next time because i don't have opportunity now to put in the in the this uh, jayananda maharaj is asking that maybe like when you have this example, why does the cherry blossom when the, the, the sun is shining in the morning? These are your cherry. How did you get your meditation? Give us some of your hints. Mm -hmm. well, it's very difficult to explain it, you know. Uh, when I think about Radhika, this uh, always is uh, uh, most beautiful things uh, from this world, uh, uh, which I can see appear in my heart, you know, in my mind. And I want to compare Radhika with these uh, most beautiful things uh, which coming to my eyes, to my mind, actually. 
this is always same story. Sometimes, you know, I just look around and just see her everywhere, actually. And uh, these words coming by, by her mercy, actually, I don't know. They just, uh, when this uh, coming into my mind, into my heart, I just writing this and uh, we think, I don't know what to say more. So, want to read again slowly, you said, okay. <clears throat> Ora de, why does the lotus flower open its buds? To point out the beauty of your eyes when you wake up at dawn on a bed of flowers. Ora yeah. Samai, why does the rainbow curl across the blue of the sky? Ah. To show the shape of your eyebrows when you hear the voice of the one who is the life of your life. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful. Oh, Gaurangi, why does the moon pass through the clouds? Oh. To touch the radiance of your face while rushing to the Abyssar with your loved one. Oh, Hema Gauri, why does the cherry blossom turn red when it meets the rising sun? To reflect the color of your lips, almost oh, beautiful. Oh, Vrishabanu Nandini, why does Yamuna splash the shores of Rindavan? Because she calls you to embrace you with her waves, oh, most beloved. Yeah. Oh, Subangi. Do the birds sing in the grooves of Raj? Or is your sweet voice heard as you call Mohan into your arms? Yeah. O oh, Praneshwari, did that sky descend on the parts of Rindavan? Or the earth is blue with radiance of your gaze by looking for Govinda's footprints? In your eyes, the universe rests because wherever you look, you see him who permeates it with his own beauty. In his eyes, the sun is at rest for the color of that sun is the color of your sari that turns red as you approach Mohan not touching the ground. There are kisses on your palms, which you send him with a warm wind to the lips that whisper your name even in dreams. Uh -uh. Oh, Radike, why do we write your name on our cheeks with tears? Why do hearts become as soft as cotton the more your name is called? Yeah. Why are you our life and soul, our treasure, our homeland? That is because you feed us with love and we want to serve you with love. Cast your merciful gaze on us, on your faithful maid servants. Yeah. There is no other way for us, no other life. Uh. We are yours and you are ours. And that's all we know. Rade, this is our breed. Rade. This is our exhalation. Rade, 
this is our whole life. Jai Sri Radha. Gaura Sundara. Gaura Sundara. You see a Thai bow here. Yes, it's the Thai bow. So beautiful. I need appreciation from your mouth. <laughs> How you fix the cyber house in Saru Publish? There we can see everything in this devotee. Who <laughs> is our family? There is hope, love and faith. This comes from Stai Bhav. Everything is there. Yes, Shiva Prada, I like how you painting these uh, beautiful pictures in our hearts with your poems. That how sweet is a Swamini and everything what we see in this world, what is beautiful is actually her. So, and the way how you put this together is very uh, amazingly beautiful and romantic. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's done in such a way that the heart of each Darcy will melt. <laughs> Thank you very much. But actually, I'm convinced that uh, this coming from her, by her mercy, actually, want yeah. to share with you one just uh, wow, and what once happened to me one time when I. Uh, I uh, was in the front of my altar. I just uh, uh, had uh, asked her how I can serve you. <laughs> and then after that, uh, some uh, verses for some poem immediately come in my mind. Actually, it's not uh, that I have a plan to write something for her in this particular moment, but just appear, just, just words coming out. And then, and then I jump and start to, to write it on the paper. So it's a... Uh, just uh, her mercy, actually, what to say. I have actually one more new, but uh, when I translate it, if you have desire, when I, I can read maybe some of next time, we will see. So nice. I actually, I want to just maybe add that I'm very happy that I can read it uh, in such an environment. Uh, uh, once, uh, uh, by insisting or from, of my uh, old friend, I uh, send one of my uh, one of my song uh, for uh, some my old friends, some devotees, uh, and it was uh, not any reaction of this, and I was uh, really convinced that they didn't it uh, feel. I cannot say that they don't understand, but I think they don't feel it. But in this environment here, I can see uh, that uh, you can feel actually these emotions that I can really can share with you because you can understand and feel it. And this is big happiness for me and big mercy for me that uh, Radhika sent me such a, such a beautiful person, such a devotees like you, so that I can uh, share it with you, and uh, I can I can uh, hear feel these same feelings uh, you even <coughs> physical physically to get. 
Steven, I'm, but uh, this you, you cannot share with cowherd boys. Yes, that's right. I realized it, you know, and I told myself I will not to share any more with nobody except with uh, real radicals devotees who can feel it. <laughs> Because this coming from the her and we can share it, everything which coming from the her, we have to share and uh, increase our happiness because uh, we are so such a deep and beautiful way connected with her, actually, by your by by her divine mercy, actually. I'm really, really very grateful and um, express this gratefulness every day to her. Just thank you, thank you. I didn't uh, know actually uh, what is the real Krishna consciousness uh, since Radha came into my life, actually. Yeah. Wow, it's a Radha Krishna consciousness. There is no I just Krishna consciousness. This is some new world, world of feelings, not just of understanding of philosophy, actually. It's the big mercy. So thank you very much because you are here and I am very grateful that I have you all of you in my life actually sadhu maharaj and all of you thank you real love festival today more close more to the speaker is not there you have to take the speaker <laughs> Radhe Radhe Shiva Prada. Chakshu. Actually, when I was listening first Chakshu, and uh, after I was listening and relishing his life story, and also when I was relishing your poems, actually something came in my heart and this is that this is examples of bhakta vira devotees who are heroes and we can be very happy very thankful for such kind of association of devotees who are really heroes, who passed all these different stages in life and also in the spiritual life, but they didn't give up because they are bhakta viras, because they are so strong, even in difficult situations, and finally they are heroes. And it, I'm I'm speechless, actually. I don't know why <laughs> I'm speaking now. Because in one sense, I'm really speechless because I relished or your lives. And when I was with Chak Shu, I will say just this first. In Munger Mandir, in the beginning, we didn't speak so much. But whenever we met together, I felt such a peace in his presence and also kindness and one more thing, honesty. And now when I was listening to him, I felt also this honesty, which is coming from his heart. And it's very rare to find such jewels. So I'm very happy, Chakshu, and I will be very happy, and I'm sure that Gurudev will be <laughs> most happy if you can share with us the more in Zoom Sanghas, because really you have to, you have something to say and to express your feelings. Please, Baya, be merciful to us. And I would like to say just something also about Shiva Prada, who came in my life and Ramani Priya's life in very kind and 
very nice way. It's very rare to find such a kind, polite, gentle person like he is. Whatever he is speaking, whatever he is doing, he is doing in this mood of kindness, with full gentleness, and we, we can witness how he is able to express his feelings. Because sometimes it's not easy to express feelings, but he got a kripa that he can express in very poetical way his feelings. And through the poesy, or poet, uh, poems, sorry, through the poems, rasa can be relished the most. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying that rasa is only possible to express through the poetic words. Because through the poetry, we can taste and relish the beautiful relationship between Radhika and Krishna. So I just want to say how Shiva Prada also in front of all devotees. I want to praise him because he's all the devotee. We had many times very long, long conversations by the phone and we never met actually. But we are so connected. He's calling, I'm calling him. We are talking one hour, two hours. And after such kind of conversations, I feel always completely enthusiastic, completely rejuvenated, because he always feel my heart with the proper feelings of someone who wants to become Radha Dasis, who wants to follow that path and only that path, and who is Radha Dasi. So to be in such association is great privilege for me, and I hope that it can help me in developing my own Baba and my own aspirations to attain this beautiful goal. Yeah. So Shiva Prada, thank you very much. Chakshu, thank you very much. Because you are like others, really, really beautiful jewels in our family, like Gurudev, like say. Radhe Radhe. Thank you. Thank you so much for the appreciation, Prabhu. Bye. Mm -hmm. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe. <coughs> Today, tomorrow, Mahatma and Sadhvis are going. If they want to share something. <laughs> <laughs> Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, all the Shabbas. Radhe Radhe to everyone. Radhe Radhe. Do you want to share first? Go ahead. Well, I was so inspired, actually, Guru Dave. Thanks for inviting me to share because the senior devotees have been family and like have given unconditional love and modeled love in action and held us with so much support and kindness that um, it melts my heart because 
that's not always the case in the Western world. You know, you come into a new group and um, you have to earn a spot and you're shy and then, and then you don't receive it. And it has been so, um, so beautiful this trip in Vrindavan, the one month we've been here to be with the devotees and to get to know so many um, more devotees and to really see the mercy of, of Radha Mohan and of Guru Dev and of the Sangha. And I have been feeling um, for a long time, like I've had a hole in my heart because, because I'm missing community and at home we have a lot of material community and and the spiritual community that has come this month has been just so wonderful. And so we love you guys. <laughs> and with the mercy of Radha Mohan, we had an amazing homewarming party. <laughs> and I have been, you can ask Mahatma, because I have been wanting to throw a party for years. I mean, I always want to throw parties. And then with COVID, I can't. And then... Here we're in Vrindavan. I think it was the best celebration we've ever had <laughs> because of all the beautiful um, Vaishnavas and just the loving mood and energy. And so that's really, I think, what um, what I want to say is that it is so humbling to be around everybody. And, um, and I just feel like we have so much to learn and we're making offenses and... And then I see others, like, <coughs> give us love, and that's how I want to be. So thank you all so much. Radhe, Radhe. <laughs> and it's happy feeling, too. I mean, it's really all of the feelings at once happening. So your turn, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> I would echo very similar feelings um, this time in Vrindavan. It's, it's been such an honor to get to meet so many members of the family, both in person and on Zoom. Um, the Zooms have become much more personal for us. Um, in the past, we've always kind of when we were able to log on, we've logged on and kind of had this thought of like, oh man, do we belong here? Like, is it okay for us to be here? And even when we first got to Vrindavan, there were so many devotees here that were like, welcome home. And people that we hadn't met in person yet. And everyone just brought us into the family right away and it was really i mean it was extremely loving and very very inspirational um it's so beautiful to see all of these senior devotees all these people that have been practicing with gurudev and doing their sadhana for such a long time and hear the stories and see visually the effects that it can have on your life. It's such an inspiration. And, you know, for me, I'm sitting here watching all of these beautiful elevated souls and trying to like move very carefully through the room. So I don't do an offense or say something that I, you know, is not going to offend somebody or I've had a lot of conversations and then afterward been like, Oh man, that was like not very humble or maybe not the best thing to say. And to have so many beautiful examples here of, of how to live a spiritual life um, has been so beautiful and so inspirational and each and every person that we get to talk to has a different story and different mercy. And some of my biggest realizations this, this trip have been from having conversations in the Prashadam hall or walking around, you know, doing paragram around the temple or working alongside another devotee doing Seva and having these conversations and the realizations that 
they have shared with me have just like led to so much um creepa in my life that it's just i'm already feeling um feeling really really fortunate and and extremely extremely blessed and and so it was such a beautiful opportunity to to get to reconnect to Vrindavan and to really take our take our relationship to to a deeper level with with the Sangha, with Guru Dave, with Radha Mohan. And we uh, we feel extremely, extremely fortunate. I, when you come here. First when you come here. Mm. Uh, we first came here in March of 2020. And we were supposed to be here for about five days, six days maybe. And on the day before we were supposed to fly back, um, the world locked down. Mm -hmm. And there were no more flights in and out of India. And so through um, quite a few tears and opportunities to surrender, we got this beautiful opportunity to live in Vrindavan for about four months. And... That experience was, um, yeah, very, very life-changing for me. I had very little experience with bhakti before that, um, almost no experience with bhakti. And so to, to have an opportunity to drop in for four months um, really helped me bring bring bhakti and bring love and devotion into, into my life. And I felt so fortunate for that opportunity. Um, and this experience this time has been also beautiful in a very different way. Last time we didn't have many devotees around because a lot of people left and certainly no one was coming in um, because there weren't any planes moving. And so our community was very tight knit and also pretty small. Um, and this time to get to see the, see the impact that this family has all over the world is so, so, so beautiful. I um I feel like I could share so many um just beautiful things about what's happened even this month, but I want to really say one thing because um because we're in a community of uh, Manjuris and. We had the blessing of getting married in front of Radha Mohan um, one week ago, and and it was very, it was so sweet. I was a little bit um, resistant to it at first internally, although it came from Guru Dev, and so I knew that it was um, beneficial. And but I had some resistance because we've been married and we had this sacred vow, and and then what I really realized after going through the wedding was. Of course, it was more beautiful than I ever could have imagined, and the feelings um, were well. I, I can't, I can't find words for them. But the special, the really, really special moment was um, they had prepared a room for us and surprised us, and it had flowers that went from the fan all the way down to all sides of the bed. And I walked in, and I thought, "We're in the kunja." <laughs> And I had, you know, been meditating and hearing about the kunja, and it was the first time that I really experienced it. And then with all of the bangles and the rings and the 
the things that I had on and I'm usually pretty simple. And so I don't know how to manage all of this. I, I really had this realization of like the importance of the mandaries. And that day earlier or the day before in class, um, Guru Dave had given a lesson on how um, Radhika needs us. And I could not help thinking like about um, how much she needs the mandaris to help her um, get into the kunja and then be in the kunja. And the whole wedding, I just felt like all of the mandari bob of all the people that that gave love and made it so special. It was a really profound um and meditation and and I got to marry the love of my life again and so it was really uh, very beautiful on um, on so many levels and so Jai Guru Dave and Jai Radha Mohan and yes we hope to see all of you in Vrindavan very soon mm-hmm. yeah looking to the future definitely like mixed feelings about leaving Vrindavan as I'm sure we all have when we have to leave. Um, And something that I'm looking forward to is continuing, continuing my relationship with the Sangha. Um, For us, we don't have a close, as Sadhvi mentioned, we don't have a, um, a spiritual community very close to us. Um, And so for us, this opportunity to get to see all of your smiling faces and hear stories and um, listen to pastimes is just truly a very, very, very special experience and something that um, I know I certainly look forward to when we're not physically, when our bodies aren't physically in Vrindavan. So thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Rade, Rade. Rade, Rade. Thank you for sharing both of you. So lovely. And uh, yes, Always come and zooms and stay connected and stay blessed and bless us also with your feelings. Is there anybody else you want to share? Well, thank you, Suniti and um, Jayananda and all the devotees. It's 6.30. And so we love you. Rade, Rade. 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 Radhe 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 Guru Dev Radhe 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 Guru Dev Radhe Radhe Jai Guru Dev Jai Radhe 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 to all of you Radhe Sexual happy birthday <laughs> Thank you, Radhe Radhe. <laughs> and dear Sadvi and Mahatma, good way home, safe trip home. <laughs> Radhe Radhe, good day. Radhe. Nice sharing. Thank you very much. Very nice. Very good. Maharaj is sharing. Mm-hmm. Huh? About your sharing class. You are so excited to listen. Thank you. I could listen to Ananda yesterday. You couldn't. <laughs> I got lucky yesterday. Friday we will 